Match access. We're being destroyed by trade, which we'll talk about. We're being destroyed at our borders. TPP will destroy you, folks. It will destroy you. It'll take any vestige that we still have left in our country. It will destroy you. People are sick and tired of being ripped off with our jobs leaving our states, with our jobs leaving our country, with the money. They get the money, they get the jobs, we get nothing. Donald Trump Friday railing against America's trade deals and the plight of the U.S. worker in an increasingly globalized economy. Polling suggesting that message is resonating with white working class voters, some of whom have traditionally voted for Democrats. Join me now to discuss this, the Democratic pollster Fred Yang, Sarah Isger Flores, former deputy campaign manager for Carly Fiorina's presidential campaign, and Jason Johnson, politics editor at TheRoots.com and Sirius XM radio host. Uh, thank you again for staying with us today. I'll start with you on this, Fred. So the numbers that you've seen here in the past, and I'll go to the NBC Wall Street Journal uh, poll, uh, and, and when we look at the numbers here, it, it is among white voters with no college education. Uh, and the numbers show 54% going for Donald Trump, 31% going for Hillary Clinton. Clinton, you're the numbers guy. You, you, you do poll. You do polls like uh, six ways a Sunday here, Fred. And, and, and are we discovering something new this uh, election cycle, or has this always been here? No, I, I think um, I think it's always been here. I think it's it's been here, um, frankly, for for a decade. And I think what is happening now in this campaign is um, Donald Trump is giving voice to a lot of those people. The voice, uh, what is that voice that Donald Trump is giving to these voters? In this case, we're talking about white voters with no college education. Your thought on that, Sarah? Well, I think what Donald Trump has particularly done is take a lot of Democratic votes away from Hillary Clinton. In the polls that I've seen, about twice as many Democrats are defecting to Donald Trump than Republicans to Hillary Clinton right now, which is a huge problem considering her already existing issues with the Bernie Sanders vote. So I think that, uh, you know, Mitt Romney won white voters by about 20 points in 2012. Donald Trump will have to probably do even better than that among white voters. But right now, she's got a problem in her own party. He will have to do better if you're just looking at the numbers here, Jason, if he's going to focus here on white working class voters. Uh, you saw in, in, in what he had said, uh, he was focusing on jobs, and he's putting that together with TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And, and that seems to be resonating right now. Is this a, a, whole, a whole switch of allegiance here that he's been able to bring on because of this messaging, Jason? No, no, I, I think in all honesty, Donald Trump has been very consistent in his messaging. The problem is he can't expand it. Donald Trump's whole message all along has been, it, it, it's, it's basically the, it's the opposite of Brexit, right? It's an economic message that he is muddled by talking about race. If Donald Trump had stayed on, we've got bad trade deals and I'm going to bring back jobs, and had laid off of attacking Mexicans and laid off of attacking black people and laid off of attacking every other group, he'd probably be doing better in the polls. He cannot win. He can do as well as he wants with white voters. He can get 65% of white voters, but he cannot win if he doesn't do better with Hispanic and African-Americans, and those groups of people are looking for jobs, too, and he's not speaking to them. Fred, on the flip side, when we look at uh, the numbers uh, among those who are white and college-educated, then we see the, the difference, right? Donald Trump, 43 percent. Hillary Clinton, 44 percent. So th that's where the dynamic is flipped. Well, um, look, I think, you know, a part of that is, uh, you know, the topic we're talking about, uh, you know, economic optimism or pessimism. Right now, um, you know, uh, the, the president, uh, Hillary Clinton, Democrats are doing well with the latter group. But let me go back to the former group. Um, Democrats, and I know the Clinton campaign, they are focused on getting every single vote. There is clearly um, a lot of folks in America, Trump voters, Clinton voters, Sanders voters, whoever, who feel like whatever economic right. progress has happened um, isn't reaching them. Um, look, I think um, because of how bellicose he's been, he has a, a louder, loud megaphone right now, but anger can only get you so far in terms of getting yeah, but, a job. So, I think that's where we're going to see the Clinton campaign sort of t articulate an economic message for the campaign. Quickly, Fred, here, are there more white working class voters than are being represented in these polls so far that we don't know about? Because Jason is saying there aren't more. No, I, I agree with Jason. I, I well, think, look, uh, yeah. presidential elections are usually the highest turnout elections of, of any election. Right. I think what's happening with Trump, to give him credit, is, again, he is giving a voice to a lot of voters who feel that um, they've been ignored. But I think in terms of are there right. hidden voters coming to vote, I, I don't think no. that's the Sarah, case. Sarah, some are saying there are. 
Yeah, I think there are. I think that Donald Trump has been able to lead on an issue that Hillary Clinton is, unfortunately for her, very weak on. She was for TPP before she was against it. Donald Trump has not only been able to capitalize on that, but he comes off as very authentic while doing it, something that his supporters not only like, but he's able to build that into further support in an issue for a lot of people that has come to economic instability in their areas, globalization. Um, it is the one part of this election that I think does mirror Brexit a little bit. Sarah Isger Flores, Fred Yang, Jason Johnson. Jason, I owe you one. Thank you all for yeah. joining <laughs> us on this Saturday. That's all for me today. Thanks for joining us here on MSNBC. Amen.